So in the previous video, we talked about the framing bits and the benefit of uh, framing bits in order to for the receiver to identify the beginning of uh, each frame and to also identify the order of the frame. So the receiver will be able to identify which frame is frame number one or two or three or twelve. Now we are going to talk about another topic that is related also to uh, the, this point, which is in addition to the voice and the framing bits, we need to transmit signaling bits, something called signaling bits, like uh, the dialing pulses when you dial uh, a number, the on hook, off hook for telephony. For example, when you call somebody the ringing tone, the busy tone, the on hook, off hook, and the dialing pulses. So we need some signaling bits. But here in the T1 carrier system, we saw that there is no place for the signaling bits. However, what they uh, decided in this standard of T1 carrier, they decided to come to the super frame. They take every six frames, they will take one frame, like let's assume that they will take frame number one, and frame number seven, frame number seven, let's say here, frame number seven, with a frame bit here, so they will take frame number one and frame number seven. So every six frames, they will take one frame and they will send the signaling bits in this frame. How is that? They said, okay, in frame number one and frame number seven, within each super frame, we are going to take the least significant bit of each channel. So least significant bit of channel number one, least significant bit of channel number two, least significant bit of channel number three, least significant bit of channel number four, and we are going to use it for signaling. So in frame number one, they will do this, and in frame number seven, they will do this. So in each super frame now, in each super frame, how many signaling bits per channel? In each super frame, we have frame number one, we'll do this, and frame number seven, we'll do this. Focus again on, e on, on one channel only. This is my advice to you in the T1 carrier system. If you are confused, focus only on one channel. Focus on channel number one. In channel number one, we are going to send one signal in bit in frame number one, and one signal in bit in frame number seven. So, two signal in bits, Two signaling bits for each channel in every super frame. So in every super frame, in every uh, let's let's write it in every super frame, we are going to transmit one signaling bit in frame number one and one signaling bit in frame number seven for each channel. For channel number one, two bits. For channel number two, two bits, and so on. These two signaling bits, they can take combination of 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So they can provide you with four different signals. And at that time, they needed only two signals, on hook, off hook, and the dialing pulses, okay? And they needed only two signals, but they designed four signals for future use. Currently, in new systems, in more advanced systems, they have up to uh, 16 signal, uh, 16 signal, uh, 16 different signals coming from four different bits. But at that time, they had only two signal bits, providing them with four different signals. Okay, so uh, that was the idea: is that in two frames, frame number one and frame number seven, in each in each super frame. They are going to take the least significant bit of each channel and transmit a, uh, and use it for signal. And they choose the least significant bit because this is the least effective bit. So we agree here that if you take the least significant bit of channel number one, here you are not going to transmit eight bits, you are going to transmit seven bits on your voice. So total eight bits, but now seven bits only will be voice. Seven bits only will be voice and one bit for signaling. This is in frame number one and frame number seven, right? So in frame number one and frame number seven, we are transmitting the voice using seven bits only. So the signal will be kind of distorted. So they choose 
in order to reduce the distortion, they choose the least significant bit in order to use it for signaling, so that they reduce the effect of distortion. And that was like uh, uh, accepted as a cost for uh, the signaling bits, and it was unfilled by the listener, by the receiver at the other side. Okay, <clears throat> here it was important for the receiver in order to, uh, to know the signal bits, it was important for the receiver to know which frame is frame number one and which frame is frame number seven. In order for the receiver to receive and detect the signaling bits, it is important to know frame number one, where is frame number one, because frame number one contains the signaling bits and frame number seven contains the signaling bits. So it was important for the receiver to know the order of the frames. And this is what we did in the previous video when we said that using the framing bits, the receiver will be able to synchronize and identify the order of the frame within the super frame. So the receiver will be able to tell that this is frame number one, frame number two, frame number three from the framing bits. This is what we explained in the previous video. So here, knowing the order is important in order to, uh, to use the signaling bits, in order to demodulate and receive the signaling bits and uh, translate them into uh, signal. Okay, so that's, uh, that's it for the signaling bits. Of course, we said that we are going to translate the signaling every six frames. So, focus on six frames now. Focus on six frames. Within the six frames, frame number one, we are going to transmit the voice of channel number one using seven bits only. While frame number two, three, four, up to frame number six, will be transmitted, the voice will be transmitted using the eight bits. So, for channel number one, focus on channel number one. In frame number one, frame number one, we are going to transmit only seven bits for voice. While for frames two up to six, we are going to transmit eight bits per cent. Eight bits per cent for voice. So total now within the six frames, total in the six frames, we have how many bits for voice? Eight times five plus seven, right? Five frames we transmit eight bits. And one frame we transmit seven bits, so this will be forty-seven bits of voice. This is for channel number one only. Forty-seven bits for voice in six frames. So on average, on average, on average we transmit per frame we transmit forty-seven divided by six bits per frame for voice of channel number one so for the voice of channel number one on average we transmit 47 divided by 6 bits per frame and this is this is equal to 7 and 5 over 6 7 and 5 over 6 that's why this kind of signaling this type of signaling they call it 7 and 5 over 6 coding they call it 7 and 5 over 6 coding because on average on average you transmit 7 and 5 over 6 bits per second on average how is that because in one frame you transmit 7 bits and in five in the next five frames you transmit 8 bits so on average it will be 7 and 5 over 6 bits per frame that's why they call this kind of coding, they call it 7 and 5 over 6 uh, coding. Later, later, uh, some advanced systems appeared, like extended something called extended super frame. In the extended super frame system, it was the same system, but the super frame was not only 12 frames, the super frame was 24 frames. Frame 24, frame 1, we call this super frame. Of course, that was a, a, a new system, advanced system to the T1 carrier, and instead of the super frame having 12 uh, frames and 12 framing bits, here the extended super frame, it has 
24 frames with 24 framing bits. The rate was the same. The frame rate, the frame rate was the same. 8,000 frames per second. We didn't change the frame rate. Why? Because it's the same frame rate. You need to transmit 8,000 samples per second for each child, so we are going to transmit 8,000 frames per second. It's a matter of naming only. Instead of naming the 12 frames as super frame, now they name the 24 frames, they name them as the extended super frame. It's a matter of naming. But the rate and the bit rate and everything is the same. But the only thing is the rate of the framing bit. The framing bit rate, it was the same also. The framing bit rate, because each frame contains one framing bit, each frame contains one framing bit, okay? The framing bit rate was also the same, 8,000 frames with 8,000 framing bits per second, 8,000 framing bits per second, But here they didn't use in the extended super frame system, they didn't use all of them, they didn't use all of them for framing. They started to divide the 8,000 framing bits per second into 2,000 of them, 2,000 per second bits per second. They were used actually for framing. And another 2,000 per second. They were used for error correction, error codes, like the parity check code, in order for the receiver to identify whether it received the bits correctly or not. So error correcting codes. And 4,000 of them for data, channel data. What, what do I mean by channel data? Usually, uh, the feedback of the channel, channel information from the receiver to the transmitter, it's a very important uh, uh, topic in communication. It's a very important topic because the, if the receiver feeds back the quality of the channel to the transmitter, the transmitter can adapt the transmission according to the quality of the channel. For example, if the receiver tells the transmitter that the channel is poor now, the, the transmitter can increase its power, can add more power so that it can overcome the poor channel. If the receiver feeds back to the transmitter that the channel is good, then the transmitter can reduce the power. It can use a different uh, modulation technique, it can use a different coding technique, and so on. So feeding back some information about the channel, this is uh, uh, important, and it was done here in the extended super frame uh, by uh, the framing bits. So the framing bits here, were not all used for framing, part of it was used for framing, another part for error correcting codes, another part for feedback of channel uh, data information. This system, T1 carrier system, whether the regular system or the extended uh, frame system, was used in North America and Japan. And then, after this, another standard appeared in Europe, another standard appeared in Europe, where in Europe they used to multiplex instead of 24 segments, they multiplex 32, 32 voice channels. So in Europe, another standard appeared, and it was standardized by it was standardized by the European Postal and Telegraph Administration, European. Postal and Telegraph Administration, which is uh, usually they uh, they abbreviated as CEPT. Okay, it was standardized by uh, the European Postal and Telegraph Administration, and they used to multiplex. 32 channels instead of 24 in the T1 carrier they used to multiplex 32 channels but from the 32 channels they multiplex it of course using TDM they multiplex it 30, 
30 voice channels and they left two channels for for framing signaling and error correction codes so 30 voice channels each of them is transmitted by 8 bits per sample so this gives 240 bits of voice voice let's say voice bits per frame so in each frame they take a sample from the 30 voice channels and this sample is translated into uh, coded into 8 bits so 8 bits multiplied by 30 8 bits per sample multiplied by 30 samples in each frame this will give 240 voice bits per frame in addition to two channels two channels used for framing signal and error correction the two channels each of them is 8 bits then this will get 2 multiplied by 8 it will be 16 bits per frame for signaling so each frame contains 240 bits for voice 16 bits for signaling this will make that we have 256 bits per frame and again we are transmitting how many frames per second we need to transmit 8000 frames per second so 8,000 frames per second. Same frame rate, frames per second. This will give us 8,000 frames per second and 256 bits per frame. This will give us the bit rate to be the bit rate of this system to be what? To be 2.048, 2.048 mega. Mega bits per second. So this was the bit rate of this system. This is the number of bits per frame. Okay, this is compared to in the T1 carrier. What was the bit rate? In the T1 carrier, the bit rate was 1.544 megabits per second. Here it's 2.048 megabits per second. This was the system that was standardized in Europe. And although this system appeared after the North America T1 carrier system. In North America and Japan, they stayed or they kept using the T1 carrier system. They didn't move to the European standard because already the system was used in many houses and many people are uh, already bought the equipment for the T1 carrier system. It was very difficult to ask all the people to change their equipment to the uh, new system of Europe. That's why the T1 carrier system stayed there in North America and Japan and Europe uh, started to use a different standard, a different system. Uh, called CEPT, uh, which uses, which multiplexes 32 channels. We'll stop here and we'll see you in the next video.